right after his resurrection, Jesus appeared to a couple of his disciples on the road to Emmaus. The story is recorded in Luke 24. It says he began to explain to them, beginning with Moses and the prophets, how every story in the Old Testament had pointed to him, something Summit Church, we have spent the last greater part of last year studying together. He was trying to give his disciples confidence that he really was who he had said he had been. Now you would have thought that the resurrection by itself would have been enough to convince them, but evidently Jesus believed it would be even more convincing to show them that every single page of a book written by 30 different authors over 1,500 years had consistently told one story and it was all about him. He was, he claimed, the center of everything that God had been doing since the beginning of time. Now, we don't know exactly what it was that he said that day, but I imagine it would have sounded something like this. In Genesis, I am the word of God creating the heavens and the earth. In Exodus, I'm the Passover lamb whose blood is sprinkled on the doorpost of your heart so that you could escape the bonds of slavery. In Leviticus, I am your temple, your holy place to meet with God. In Numbers, I'm your ever-present guide. I'm your pillar of cloud by day, your pillar of fire by night. In Deuteronomy, I was the coming prophet who was greater than Moses. In Joshua, I was the conquering warrior, leading my people into the promised land. In Judges, in the book of Judges, I was the broken savior rising up to rescue my people. In 1st and 2nd Samuel, I was the pure-hearted shepherd king rushing out to face your giants all alone. In Ruth, I was the kinsman redeemer. In 1st and 2nd Kings, I was the righteous ruler. In 1st and 2nd Chronicles, I was the restorer of the kingdom. In Ezra, I was the faithful scribe. In Nehemiah, I was the rebuilder of the walls. In Esther, I was your advocate risking my life to restore you to royalty. In Job, I was your living redeemer. In Psalms, I was the one hearing the cry of your hearts. In Proverbs, I was wisdom personified. In Ecclesiastes, I was the meaning that lets you escape the madness. In Song of Solomon, I was your lover and I was your bridegroom. In Isaiah, I was the wonderful counselor, everlasting father, mighty God, the prince of peace, wounded for your transgressions and bruised for your iniquities. In Jeremiah, I was the spirit who writes God's laws on your heart. In Lamentations, I was the weeping prophet. In Ezekiel, I was the river of life bringing healing to the nations. In Daniel, I was the fourth man in the fire. In Hosea, I was the ever faithful husband pursuing his unfaithful bride. In Joel, I was the restorer of all that the locusts had eaten. In Amos, I was your burden bearer. In Obadiah, I was the judge of all the earth. In Jonah, I was the prophet cast out into the storm so that you could be brought in. In Micah, I would be the everlasting ruler born to you in Bethlehem. In Nahum, I'm the avenger of God's elect. In Habakkuk, I am your reason to rejoice even when your fields are empty. In Zephaniah, I am the great reformer. In Haggai, I'm the cleansing fountain. In Zechariah, I was the pure son who I said one day every eye on earth will behold. And in Malachi, I was the son of righteousness rising with healing in my wings. Ah, but the Bible continues. In Matthew, he was the king of the Jews. In Mark, he is the son of God. In Luke, he was the savior born to us in the city of David, Christ the Lord. In John, he was the word made flesh dwelling among us. In Acts, he is Christ the risen Lord proclaiming salvation to the nations. In 1st and 2nd Corinthians, he is the spirit at work in the churches. In Romans, he is the great justifier. In Galatians, he is the righteousness imputed to us by faith. In Ephesians, he is our righteous armor. In Philippians, he is God who meets our every need. In Colossians, he is the firstborn of all creation. In 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, he is coming to meet his people in the air, descending from heaven with a shout. In 1st and 2nd Timothy, he is the only mediator between God and man. In Titus, he is our faithful pastor. In Philemon, he is our redeemer who restores us to service. In Hebrews, he is our great high priest. In James, he is the life and work in our faith. In 1st and 2nd Peter, he is the living cornerstone rejected by men but exalted by God. In 1st and 2nd, 3rd John, he is the advocate pleading his righteousness in our place. In Jude, he is God our Savior, the one who keeps us from stumbling and presents us faultless in his presence with great joy. And in Revelation, he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world, 
the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You see, ladies and gentlemen, it's always only ever been about Him. It's always been about Him. The Apostle Paul said, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by Him all things were created in heaven on earth, whether visible or invisible, whether thrones or rulers or dominions or authorities. All things were created through Him, and all things were created for Him. He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. He is the head of the church, His body. He is the beginning. He is the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He might be preeminent. He is the center. If you believe that, put your hands together, and let's worship the beauty and the centrality of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy.